In an instant, life changes. Oh my gosh, dude, it's headed right for us pretty much. Oh my gosh, tornado on the ground, tornado on the ground. <gasps> it's throwing 18 wheelers. This is something I have never seen before. In 2012, a series of powerful storms decimates 14 states. In the plains and parts of the Midwest, this is a day of recovery after a violent weekend. More than 100 tornadoes touched down in the Midwest. One of the most violent and destructive hits the small town of Henryville, Indiana. With winds up to 175 miles per hour, March 2nd, 2012, 21-year-old Rhett Adams grabs his smartphone and starts to record. That's the most insane thing I've ever seen in my life. My adrenaline was going and I didn't really think about it. It seemed like it was a little bit of a distance away, but not close enough to be, you know, dangerous. A rural community of fewer than 2,000 people, Henryville has one four-way stop, one gas station, and eight churches. When the tornado warnings sound, not everyone is concerned. My mother was texting me and she's, you know, she was telling me there was going to be severe weather and I kind of blew it off, you know, didn't think anything of it. Neither does Perry Hunter, a teacher at Henryville High School. It just seemed like a normal day to me. We knew that there was a chance for bad weather, but we get these warnings quite often in the spring. Coming right toward Henryville. Maybe I know it. Just a few miles away, Perry's aunt Lenora Hunter and Wayne, her husband of 41 years, listen to the tornado warnings on television. You've got to be taking shelter now portions of Crawford County because this storm is moving through your area with a tornado on the ground. Hopefully it goes to the north of us. We were watching out the living room window and that's why I said, that looks kind of wicked over there. It's coming here. I'm hoping it it's goes picking to... up. Uh -huh. And then we realized it was going to hit Henryville. I know. It's picking stuff up. Look, you can see it rotate. We both had little cameras that you could take video or snapshots. We just liked doing that. We were always fascinated with the sky. We just always took pictures. It looks like it's heading right toward us. Yep, maybe we should get away from the window. It looked like it was so far away when I look at the videos. I've got to close the door. Oh my gosh, tornado on the ground, tornado on the ground. Before they know it, the tornado is upon them. Lenora and Wayne huddle together in a room with no windows in the safest part of their house and cover themselves with a blanket. The couple has no idea how things will turn out. He said, I love you, and I said, I love you too. Then immediately, we both said, my ears are popping. You know, it was like at the same time. What starts as a fascination with the stormy sky is now a dangerous life or death struggle for survival. Lenora blacks out. Maybe I remember kind of being lifted, but I don't remember anything until I woke up then. On the other side of town, Lenora's nephew Perry helps release kids from Henryville High School 15 minutes early. 1,200 children from kindergarten through high school in connecting buildings. But one bus released early is trapped by the storm. The driver turns around and races 11 young elementary students back to the school. The driver's 8th grade son, Preston, is on the bus with her and describes their terrifying trip, recorded on the bus security camera. Another bus driver came over the radio and said, I see the tornado on the ground. There's a bunch of little kids crying. It was kind of scary. Then we ran into the school. Me and my mom were the last ones off. They get off the bus just in time because seconds later, with the camera still rolling, it's picked up and slammed into a diner. Meanwhile, footage from the school security system shows what happens in the high school, where about 80 adults and children are hunkered down in school offices and a closet. The lights went out, and then there was a loud explosion from the gym imploding, and uh, that's when I hit the ground, covered up, and uh, we heard the school rattling probably for about 10 seconds, and stuff starts being pulled out of the gym. 
You see stuff coming loose on the roof. It's 175 mile an hour wind. I ran around to the front of the school and it was completely gone. Chaos and damaging hail follow. Many in Henryville lose everything, but they regroup and start over, knowing it may be a long road back before life returns to normal. I've talked to a few people who are really struggling with anxiety from the whole situation, and I'm one of them. I mean, it's, it's not something I want to experience again. While some in town are scarred from the experience, no one suffers a loss like Lenora. Her husband Wayne, a retired emergency room nurse, is found crushed in their home. He dies from his injuries. He is the one person killed in Henryville during the tornado. At 59, you never think you're going to be a widow. You just don't think that it will happen to you. Lenora and her family are devastated and her house destroyed. But she plans to rebuild and install a tornado-proof basement on the land she treasured with her husband. We're going to make him proud. People should cherish the time that they have. Live it like it's your last. Carpe diem, he would say. <laughs>